Oh, yeah. So I'd like to introduce Al Shelton and Lou Beckingsale. It's a great Tuesday nighters. Um, and uh, they did it as a team, and uh, they're good. They've got a good story to tell, I'm sure, because they've been great to have around Wellington. We're losing Lou to the South Island. We're trying to stop it, but if anyone got an idea of how we can stop it going, that's good to come up with it. So who wants the... Um, um, I'm going to start, I think. So you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plug that in. What do I do? Put it there. Oh, yeah, just to clip it in. Just clip I think it you put it out there, and then you put that in your pocket. Put that. Just hold on to it. It's active, yeah. So put that in your pocket. No. Yeah, so um, I'm Lou and this is Al and we ran um, ours together at the end of 2000, Sorry. end of last year. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my year leading up to it, because I think lots of people are going to talk about the day and then I'm going to hand over to Al who's going to tell you a little bit about our adventure. Um, so I think the first photo, for many of you who are in the room already know that I only started mountain running at the start of last year. However, I did have three passions that um, meant that I was uh, like a duck in water. I loved to run, loved to run fast and long distance. Um, it's me in the London Marathon um, a few years ago. I've always loved to tramp, ski, backcountry ski. So I've always loved the mountains and I love beer. Next slide. So that meant that when I met these Tuesday running, this motley crew of Tuesday running boys um, and, and girls, um, I fitted in quite nicely and I found myself here every Tuesday night having a run, having a beer, planning our missions for the coming weekend. A um, few months in I found myself signed up to, next slide, run around uh, Mount Taranaki and at this point I hadn't run any further than marathon distance on the road or been out in the hills for longer than six hours running. So I was going into unknown territory, as, as was uh, a few of the other guys that I was running with. And um, I learned a lot about running on this day. Martha's not here tonight, but she set the pace and she set a nice slow, well it's not slow, but a nice strong, steady pace and she pretty much kept us moving all day. She ran everything that was runnable and um, we finished, felt good. I think it was about a 12 hour trip. and. Um, I guess at the start I was intrigued to know what would happen to my body, my body and my mind, but um, it turns out not a lot, just, just good to get home for a, a beer at the end of the day. Um, Hugh will remember that well. So following that, like just every weekend that I was in Wellington, um, many trips out into the Tararuas, lots of different friends. Um, this is a trip in the Arongarongas. Every trip I learned something new about my food, I learned something new about my hydration, I learned something new about the gear that I did or didn't need to carry, um, and I learned a lot about the weather. So this was a southern uh, crossing, uh, full moon southern crossing attempt. We didn't see much of the moon, there was snow, um, and yeah, I learned a lot about gear and uh, weather on that trip. Um, next slide. I think these two guys here were pretty pivotal in me actually attempting an SK. I was privileged, privileged enough to be invited on some of their um, trips. Uh, Northern Crossing we did before the winter and um, a banister trip for Tim's birthday. And um, I think for the entirety of the trip they talked about the SK. So this is them actually spelling out SK, <coughs> look at, looking down the main range. And um, at this point I was kind of starting to think, oh, maybe it would be interesting to know if I could do it. Um, but uh, they talked about it and I just listened. And um, yeah, a couple of pretty epic trips. Tim also had a knack of choosing um, awesome days out and so got a really good sense of the route and um, how, how big it was. And of course this was the first trip across the northern section as well. That's the next slide. I think um, this was the trip that made me decide that I definitely wanted to give the NSK an attempt. So this was a midweek uh, southern main range, so this is the third section of the route. Um, we got a stellar day, I was with, out with Dave and um, I got an email in my inbox the next day saying do you know how we fared up against the big guns and so he had pretty, pretty much checked our times out against Chris and Tim and turns out we were a bang, bang on pace so um, I think it was about a 12 hour pretty, it was a, it was a nice day out, it wasn't, we weren't pushing it too hard and I kind of thought okay well if, if we can do this trip in 12 hours and I probably could have turned left for glory rather than right for Otaki at that point, um, I thought I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty ready to do it and I was in the middle of training for the Aorangi Undulator, next slide. Um, 
So lots of big training miles every week and lots of back-to-back -back runs and um, was probably the fittest that I probably will ever be. Um, <laughs> and um, But I had a small problem because Dave had pretty much led me around the Tararuas. I'd been out with Ian who always had his GPS and his map and compass and I was like, mm, I wasn't feeling that confident maybe to get myself through that northern section if the clag came in. So um, a couple of weeks before the undulator I had a conversation with Al and it turns out he was thinking about doing the S, giving an SKN attempt as well um, and I s asked him how I'd feel about running um, as a pair and he was keen. So we ran the last day of the undulator together and then five weeks later I was packing my bags to give our first um, attempt to go. There you go. Welcome back. Does it do anything? Um, <clears throat> hold on. Oh, someone push the button for me. Um, yeah, so um, I guess for me, my um, initial exposure to the SK, I'd, I'd heard of it as a tramping trip, but I never thought about it as a running trip until Chris and Lawrence did it back in 2013. Um, and I went up and supported them that day and ran a little piece of the um, a little piece of the course with them. Sat in Drak Hut for about two hours while they were getting lost up on Dundas. But um, yeah, that sort of inspired me to give it a crack. And I saw these guys doing it in crappy weather with a two-hour detour and sub 24. And I thought, well, if they can do that, then if I have a really good day, I can do about 24 hours. So um, kind of the seed was planted that day, I think. Um, and yeah, it sort of sat there and, and, and grew for a couple of years um, until, like Lou said, um, oh yeah, found someone else who wanted to give it a go and I thought, oh, doing it as a pair sounds like quite a nice idea. Makes it a little bit, little bit, less, um, little bit less daunting than doing it solo, I think. So um, yeah, I guess for me, um, I've been out in the mountains quite a lot in the last five, ten years, um, but there were still a few bits of the route I hadn't done, so a big thing for me was doing a really good recce of the whole lot. So I got there up there in winter and um, did the northern section, um, which was a really awesome, awesome trip. Um, and then you want to switch to the next one, Chris? And yeah, did the southern main range as well uh, about a month later. Um, and once I'd done that, I'd, I'd done the whole route in bits now, so um, I was feeling a hell of a lot more confident just knowing that I'd covered each section of the of the course um, and yeah just feeling confident about being able to navigate my way around it without too much trouble. Next one? Next one? Yep. Oh that's um, that's Lou on our first attempt. Yeah so we went up there and um, gave it a crack was it mid-December last year um, got an hour into it up to Herapai Hut and the weather was absolute shit so um, in hindsight, we wisely pulled the pin, which wasn't an easy thing to do, but it was it was bloody awful up there. And um, you know, starting off in really awful weather with four, five, six hours of you know horizontal rain and wind would make the whole thing pretty unpleasant. So we bailed out and went back again a week later. The next weekend, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, stayed at the little Putara schoolhouse, which is a really cool little place. Um, Thanks, Chris. Uh, and yeah, and that's us. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a great, great spot. Really, really cool spot. Uh, that's just us getting ready and piles of gels and God knows what else. Uh, what do we got next? Um, that's the one and only photo we managed to take during the actual run. We we're a little bit. I wouldn't let him take like, photos. I wasn't letting him stop. We just. Yeah, we, yeah, she wasn't. She was like a sergeant major at every hut. It was like five minutes, and Lou's like, "Come on, we're gonna go, we're gonna go, we're gonna go." Um, that to me is real key. Like, don't stop long at the huts. That'll that'll kill you. It really will. You got to keep your stops short and sharp. It it makes the world a difference. Um, and that's the end. Um, <laughs> and um, I guess the only thing I'll, I'll add in between is um, Lou had a really great day and she was really strong the whole day and, and honestly made it look easy. Uh, I had a bit of a shit day to be honest. Um, fun factor, call it fun factor. Yeah, the fun factor, yeah. Fun factor was really high up until about uh, Manga Hooker and the ladder. Um, feeling really good, weather was pretty decent, all went great and then I just went 
um, absolutely crashed at about that point. Um, real stomach troubles, nauseous, wanted to vomit for about five hours and it wouldn't come. Um, and yeah, it was it was probably the darkest place I've ever been to on a run. Uh, it was it was it was tough. And got to Alpha Hut and I said to Lou, just just go on, just leave me, you know. Um, I'm, I'm just going to hold you back. And um, she convinced me to keep going. And and I guess you know, you get through those low paces, it comes back. You know, you, you go through the the tough spots, but but it improves. You keep going. And we go on to the Marchant and. I started to feel better and then, yeah, suddenly realised we were going to crack 24 and we hit Kaitoki car park at 23 and a half and yeah, that's the glory of the SK finish. You sit in a <laughs> crap car park in the middle of the night, 3 o'clock in the morning, it's, it's, you don't do it for the glamour, eh? So um, yeah, and any final thoughts for me? All I'd just add to that, I mean, I did say go on at the, um, where were we? Alpha. And there's no way I was going on because I wouldn't have got there without him. He got me through the northern section, he navigated um, us, whipped out his compass and I felt pretty, you know, comfortable knowing that we are on the right track. So um, it wasn't about me leaving at that point. Um, there's no other way out when you're in Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, and I didn't really want to sleep move. there. No, I was going to talk a little bit, if i got time to talk about yeah. what's the next, yeah. is there any of I was going to talk about food because I'm a dietitian. For those of you who don't know, um, this is my famous cottage cheese loaf. Perfect um, food for mountain running. Combination of um, protein and carbohydrate, and it's got lots of salt in it, and it seems to really sit well in the stomach. I'm a big believer that on these big long runs, um, it's a totally different approach to Tim. That I prefer to eat solid food, and um, I'm at an intensity that's similar to. Um, tramping I guess so for me it's eating every half an hour it's not eating a big quantity of food but it's real solid food and most of it's savoury food so um, I'm always looking forward to the next mouthful of whatever it comes out I pretty much lived on peanut butter last year I think I'd go through a jar a week when you're doing that many miles you need some good healthy calories to get in and at the end of every run I've always got a bag of salt and vinegar chips and a, and a beer although beer did not go down at all well at the end of this <laughs> case um, I guess my key lessons are, or well, my key take home messages for anyone that's thinking about it, it's all about the preparation, go out there and have fun and really enjoy it, make sure you've got good navigation or you've got a good navigator with you, so I think that confidence and knowing where you are and knowing you can just move forward um, is really key. Um, and rest afterwards. <laughs> I didn't do enough of that and I'm probably still paying the paying for it now but um yeah it's it's definitely a good good journey and I encourage anybody to give it a go. It's it's totally doable. Do you want to say anything else? Yay, well done. <laughs>